Welcome to episode two of Air Gun Action, a new fortnightly show dedicated to air gun shooting. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the Reximex Pretensis in the walnut stock version, but before that, I'm heading to the farmyard to target nocturnal rats under the cover of darkness. Right, we're on the farm after rats tonight, which I'm really excited about because I love my winter night vision ratting. Now, we've been quite fortunate in that we've managed to have time to turn up before it's got properly dark, which is beneficial for several reasons. Now, first and foremost, although I shoot this farm fairly frequently, it can change from one week to the next because farmers like to move stuff around and, and, and leave stuff lying around. So from a safety point of view, turning up with a bit of remaining light has enabled me to have a walk around just check that I'm not going to be stumbling over machinery once it gets dark um, and just re-familiarise myself with the lie of the land. Now, more significantly than that from a hunting point of view is the fact that it's enabled us to have a proper look around and see where the rats are really active. Now, they are pretty spoilt here. It's a mixed holding, so there are beef cattle here. Now, all the muck from them and their feed, that attracts the rats. Uh, there are also turkeys here, so you may hear some noise from the turkeys later on, and there are grain stores. So all of these areas obviously supply a uh, food source for those rats. Now, looking around, we've had some rain quite recently, so it's pretty muddy, and that's enabled us to spot a lot of rat runs where their footprints are showing in that soft mud that's been left uh, from the, the wet weather on the, around the yard. So we've found some busy looking runs, we find holes under sort of undermined walls and barn edges. All of those areas are going to be worth a look when it gets properly dark and those rats start moving. Um, so that's what we're planning to do. The kit I'm planning to do it with, I have got the gun uh, tonight is the FX Dreamline Classic, which is a beautiful air gun, uh, sub 12 foot pound, 177 caliber. So really well suited to shooting around the confines of farm buildings. Um, Tonight I've paired it with the Hick Micro Alpex and that's a day and night digital scope. Now, apart from producing a nice sharp night vision image uh, in infrared and it, it comes with a supplied infrared illuminator, it also produces a really good color image by day and actually an amazing color image in twilight. Uh, aside from that, it's, it's absolutely packed with features. Um, your usual choices of reticles, um, being able to save various zeroing profiles and what I'm most keen to show you tonight obviously is the recording direct to its onboard memory. Um, it's also got a really good long run time. Um, I haven't got time to go through all the features now so if you do want to find out more about it have a look at the Scott Country website. Very quickly though one thing I particularly like about it is the fact that it's proportioned really similarly to a normal telescopic sight so it's got a 30 millimeter tube, so I've been able to mount it up with my usual sports match scope mounts. And although I use ball pups quite frequently for ratting, the Dreamline Classic being a rifle shaped air gun, um, with a scope that mounts in this way, I've been able to mount the scope really nice and low to the barrel, which obviously means that holdover has less effect um, on my aim off points at closer range, which is quite an important consideration when you're ratting because if you're using a ballpup with a high mounted scope you're going to need to use a lot of holdover at closer ranges. Anyhow that's the kit. I'm going to go and find a place to settle in before it gets properly dark and hopefully we'll get a few rats.
Wow, there were a lot of rats on the edge of that empty pen then. Um, and they weren't very far away from me. They scarpered at the sound of that impacting pellet, which I'm really not surprised about, but I'm sure they'll be venturing back out before too long. Now, I actually forgot to refocus for that one. It was a bit closer than the other shots I've been taking, but I hope that the footage that I've got so far is good enough to sort of give you some idea of the quality, um, of image quality that I'm seeing through here tonight. That was, a, that was a small one and it was another one from the pen but I've got to say it's been slower around there than I'd expected um, especially after seeing so many there earlier on um, it's I'm, I'm not getting a lot of shots from this spot now so I think the best thing to do is probably have a walk around have a bit of a look around and find another spot to dig in and hopefully pick up a few more rats Right, so we've moved spots into the tractor shed and um, I'm glad we're still indoors because we've had a bit of drizzle and don't want to get soaked through. Um, another thing I'm pleased about is that the roof wouldn't stop creaking in the other barn and we had a sneaky feeling it was going to fall in on us at any moment. So anyhow, we've had a bit of a look round with the spotter, with the thermal, to choose a new spot. Uh, what I've got in front of me here is like a big pallet store with a log store behind that. Um, and in front of it, off to the side, is a big muck heap. So you've got a food source with the, from the muck heap, and you've got habitat from those pallets and the logs. So we spotted a few rats there. We've moved the kit here. Um, I've just had another quick scan. There's nothing out and about yet, but to be honest with you, we've made a lot of noise moving the kit here. I'm talking now, which you have to be a bit more quiet. I'm pretty sure we'll see a few rats out again soon. Well, that was a cracking start from the new spot. Two in nice quick succession there. Now, there's a little digger parked in front of the pallet store next to the muck heap. And um, I'm pretty sure that the rats are going to be thinking that they're safe underneath there. And it looked like those two did, and it obviously proved to be a bad move. So hopefully that will give others confidence to venture out. They'll think they're safe from owls and other predators, and I'll be able to pick them off from underneath that little digger.
actually spotted that one venturing out uh, with, the, with the thermal spotter. Now, it isn't a cheap piece of kit. It's far from essential, but if you can justify the outlay, it can be such a great advantage to be able to see your quarry's heat signature. That's been a decent flurry of activity from this spot. Now, I must admit, I had to wait a little bit longer for that last one, but I'm pretty confident that there are still a few to be had from here. Well, it's gone very quiet here now, and you know, the last few scans, I've not seen anything apart from the heat signatures of the shot rats, which are gradually fading. Um, that said, I just saw a glimpse of a, of a heat signature, which was definitely a live rat, back in the pallet store. So we'll sit it out for a little bit longer, just to see if that one's gonna venture out. Right, that is going to be the last one. It was a long wait for that one, but um, it's been a decent session and I'm glad that we made the move because I've shot quite a few rats from this second spot and also they've all been from a pretty tiny area, mostly um, around that, that little digger. Um, the Hick Micro Alpex and FX Dreamline have just performed brilliantly. I've been using this setup quite a lot for my nighttime ratting over the past few months. I'm very familiar with it and it's just it's just an absolute dream to use. Um, to be honest with you, I can't wait to get out with it again. So, it's been a great session. What I've got to do now is get these rats picked up. An interesting night vision session on the rats there. Next up, let's take a look at the Reximex Protensis from Rangerite. Right, I'm gonna kick straight off 
by saying that I reckon this is one of the best looking sub 600 pound air guns I have ever seen. It's the Reximex Pretensis supplied by Range Right. Now this is the Walnut version and it has a retail price of £525 which is really competitive. It tips the scales at a pretty modest 3.3 kilos before you fit a scope and overall length is about 102 centimetres. Now it is quite a large gun so smaller shooters may find it a bit of a handful but it is still pretty light. Now I really like the styling of the Walnut stock but it is also available in other options including synthetic and some really nice laminate options. The stock is ambidextrous and I found it to be really comfortable. Now with this scope setup the point of balance is falling about 10 centimeters in front of the trigger blade. Now focusing a bit closer on the stock I really like this fluted forend. Those grooves provide a lovely contact point for your leading hand. I really like a steep pistol grip so I've got on very well with the one on the pretensis. Now the area of the stock behind it is scalloped on both sides to create a cutaway for the base of your thumb which makes it even more comfortable. Now that area also features some really neat stippling which apart from looking pretty smart also very much helps to improve grip. Another really nice feature of the stock is the adjustable cheek piece. All you need to do is slacken off the two grub screws and you can adjust it up and down to achieve correct eye alignment with your telescopic sight. Now the stock is finished with a hard rubber butt pad and is also pre-fitted with uh, studs for accessory attachment at the front and at the back plus you even get a removable Picatinny accessory rail that attaches to the underside of the forend. Moving on to the metalwork, I really like the black finish and I've got to say that the standard of finish and engineering looks to be very good. Now this gun is fitted with a Picatinny type scope rail, that said though the middle section can also accept dovetail mounts and obviously that's, that's how I've mounted up this scope here today. Um, there isn't a great deal of clamping space in front of the magazine housing but that said I've got a fairly long scope mounted up here and I managed to do that without any problems. Barrel length is 57 centimeters and as you can see it's secured by a retainer at the front. Now the barrel is equipped with a half inch UNF thread for silencer attachment and I would imagine that a lot of hunters would want to do that. Um, obviously that would mean doing away with the supplied air stripper that you can see here. The review gun is 177 caliber and it comes supplied with two 14 shot magazines and a single shot tray. Now the Pretensis is also available in 22 caliber and that version runs a 12 shot magazine. Now when the magazine is fitted it does stand slightly proud of the scope rail but that's not really a problem unless you're planning to use very low mounts. To remove the magazine you pull the side lever all the way back and then push the mag from the left and pull it out from the right. Now to load it you then rotate the clear plate clockwise all the way until it stops. You then drop a pellet into that first open bay to hold the inner drum under its spring tension. You then rotate the clear plate back dropping a pellet into each bay until it's fully loaded. Your full magazine then pushes back in from the right until it stops. You now return the side lever to its forward position and the gun is loaded, cocked and ready for action. Now side lever actions have become really popular over the past few years and I really do like the one on the Pretensis. It's smooth, positive action, cocks the gun, indexes the magazine and probes home a pellet with minimal fuss. It's great fun on the plinking range, but I know that hunters are really going to appreciate having quick follow-up shots to hand. Guns in this price bracket don't always have the best triggers, so I was pleasantly surprised to discover that the Pretensis has a very good one. Now, I really like the curved blade, which is a match type design, and it can be adjusted for height and angle. Now, the actual trigger unit is two-stage, 
and it is adjustable, although you need to remove the gun from the stock to do that. Now, if they all leave the factory as good as this one, you won't really need to mess about with it. Straight out of the box, this one's got a pretty short first stage, which comes to an obvious stop before a very crisp and predictable second stage break. The manual safety catch is cross bolt style and I really like its position just above and behind the trigger blade. Now you push it across from the left to make it safe and then you push it back from the right to knock the safety catch off when you're ready to take the shot. This is a sub 12 foot pound model and the 177 caliber test gun is churning out a muzzle energy of 11.1 foot pounds with a variation of nine feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Now, it doesn't have a regulator, so you can expect to notice some kind of power curve as you shoot your way through the charge. Uh, there is a power adjuster switch positioned just in front of the magazine housing and that feature could come in very handy for backyard plinking as it enables you to knock the power down as low as five foot pounds. Air filling is via an inlet under the cap at the front of the cylinder. Now it's a foster connection and the gun comes supplied with the necessary adapter. Maximum fill pressure is 250 bar and that elegant cylinder holds enough air to deliver 150 shots in 177 caliber and about 180 in 22. Now there's a gauge positioned just in front of the power adjuster. It's very clearly marked so you can quickly check your air reserves at a glance. The Pretensis is a pleasure to shoot. It's nicely balanced, it's got a nice positive side lever action and the trigger is crisp and predictable, but best of all, it's capable of a pretty impressive level of accuracy. Shooting from the support of a bench, ragged single hole groups are pretty much an expectation at 30 meters. Now with the right ammo, it's still capable of single holing, although albeit a little bit more loosely at 40 meters. So this air gun certainly has the power and accuracy to tackle small pests. So, that's the Rexymex Pretensis from Rangerite in its walnut stock guise. Now, I wanted to manage my expectations when I first saw this air gun's retail price, but I've got to say, it punches way above its price point in terms of features and performance. Factor in its great looks too, and it really is hard to find fault with this stylish Turkish PCP. That's all we have time for in this episode. Thank you for watching and we'll be back with much, much more in two weeks. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe. And do take a look at the subscription offers for Airgunner and Airgun World magazines, which apart from saving you money, also include some great deals on shooting insurance. Now, most importantly, may I wish you a very Merry Christmas from myself and the rest of the Airgun Action team.